welcome again in my course power electronics application in power system in the last lecture i i started discussion on uh, a different type of uh, power electronic based compensator which is uh, a series type of compensator and it is its name is uh, thyristor control series capacitor right so in last lecture i discussed the basic operating principle of the compensator that is tcsc and also i discuss uh, the different uh, possible operating conditions okay for tcsc and also i i discuss uh, the uh, practical uh, schematics of a tcsc those things so in this particular lecture I will again start with uh, different mode of operation of TCSC and uh, I will also develop the mathematical model for TCSC which is very important. So, if you have followed my uh, previous lecture, you have seen that in uh, developing the concept of any type of compensator, one needs to understand the mathematical modeling. Right. So, therefore, here also in TCSC, we will develop the detailed mathematical modeling, so that things will be or cons concept will be understood by you. Right. So, let us proceed. So, in this lecture also, we will consider thyristor controlled series capacitor or it is most famous with its acronyms TCSC. Okay. So, what is our assumption? Our assumption is uh, this TCSC is lossless. Okay. So, in fact, this same assumption we have taken for uh, this, this static VAR compensator as well, we consider the device is lossless. So, not only our transmission system is assumed to be lossless, this device compensators are also considered to be lossless. Okay. So, this, this will hold to be true for all my uh, lectures in this particular course. Okay. This is just to avoid some more complexities and to make it more simplistic form. Okay. Now, what is that basic schematic diagram? So, in the last class I have shown that the basic schematic of the TCSC is something like that. We have a fixed capacitor and we have a variable reactor and this reactor reactants will be varied through this thyristor control. Okay. So, this is what the basic schematic diagram. So, this is what basic schematic or circuit diagram. Okay. Now, next is we will try to understand what are the modes of operation of TCSC having. So, modes of operations. Okay. So, basically this TCSC operates in three different modes. Okay. I will discuss each of them. So, TCSC is operated in three different modes. What are the three different modes? Number one is called bypass thyristor mode. bypassed thyristor mode. Okay. So, what it is actually I will come to that. Now, the second mode is block thyristor mode. Block thyristor mode and the third one is Vernier control mode. Okay. So, 
okay so these are the three different modes of operation usually a tcs is operated in these three different modes and i will discuss one by one now if you can uh, remember my discussion on static var compensator or thyristor control reactor to be more precise i discuss uh, that a thyristor can be either operated in fully on mode or it can be operated in fully off mode or it can be operated as partially on mode okay so based upon that only we have this three different modes of operation of TCSC. So, basically in this uh, bypass thyristor mode, these thyristors are kept fully on okay. and block thyristor mode thyristors are kept fully off and in vernier control mode these thyristors are operated in partially conducting mode partially conducting mode okay now why we require these three uh, different modes of operation this i will come to uh, that and uh, then the things will be clear to you now look look at this in block thyristor mode when thyristors are fully on then uh, this according to this schematic diagram this this uh, tcsc will look like this we will have this capacitor we will have this TCR. Okay. Now, this will be the reactance that is minus J X C which is the reactance of the capacitor and the reactance of the inductor will be J X L. Okay. Now, in this particular mode, so T C S C acts as a parallel L C circuit. Okay. So, TCSC act as a parallel LC circuit and if you look at this basic schematic diagram, here we have the reactance of the capacitor. So, out of which this uh, reactance of the reactor is kept lower. So, the reactance of the reactor that is TCR is, des is designed to be of lower value or lesser value value than than that of the fixed capacitor ok. So, when you have this J X L that is reactance of the reactor is lower than this reactance of the capacitor then what will essentially happen the current flowing through this suppose this is I T C R uh, would be higher than the current flowing through the capacitor which is let us say I C. Okay. So, most of the current will flow through the I T C R. So, out of this line current I where this I represents the line current of the transmission line. So, most of the current will flow through this reactor rather than this capacitor. Okay. So, that is why it is called bypass thyristor mode, okay. and, but obviously this is a not normal operating mode of T C S C. Rather this is this mode of uh, operation is used when this capacitor is to be saved from the abnormal higher voltage or abnormal over voltage. So, this mode of operation, this mode of operation is to protect the capacitor 
from over voltage ok. So, when over voltage may happens, so that is of course, not a healthy condition. So, when it happens, when there is a possibility of having over voltage across the capacitor, this mode of operation is initiated ok, that is bypass thyristor mode. Now, in next mode is block thyristor mode. In block thyristor mode, thyristors are kept fully off. Now, if thyristor is kept fully off, then as if this path which is parallel path of the fixed capacitor is getting disconnected, because there is a switch here which will isolate this reactor from the uh, parallel circuit of the fixed capacitor. So, therefore, the circuit will look like this. Okay. So, it will have a just a capacitor and it is also known as a fixed capacitor mode of operation. It is also known as a fixed capacitor mode of operation. Now, the question is when we require this, of course, we do not require this or we do not intend to have this op uh, mode of operation during healthy conditions. R rather we will be uh, using this mode of operation in specific conditions. Now, what is that condition? So, this mode of operation, this mode of operation of TCSC operation is generally avoided and it is used as waiting mode mode before before the vernier control mode okay so this mode is called waiting mode and this is operated just before uh, you bring this thyristor, uh, this uh, third mode of operation which is vernier control mode. Okay. Now, in vernier control mode, you know it is uh, used during healthy operating uh, conditions and uh, in this particular mode of operation, thyristors are operated in partially conducting mode. Okay. So, that means, we have the control ability feature here we can control the overall uh, impedance uh, of the circuit uh, through this mode of operation and thereby you, you have already seen there are two possible cases. One is uh, uh, inductive mode of operation of TCSC, another is capacitive mode of operation of TCSC. That means, in one mode of operation the effective impedance of the TCSC would be inductive impedance and another mode of operation the effective impedance or the net impedance of the TCSC would be capacitive impedance. So, we have two different types of this vernier control mode, there are two different vernier control modes. Number one is inductive vernier control, I should write it A, inductive vernier control mode, Num B is capacitive vernier control mode. Okay. Now, what happens in uh, this uh, inductive vernier control? As you know that we have given a conditions. So, here the net impedance, the net impedance impedance of TCSC that is Z TCSC is inductive. Okay. So, this I already have shown in the uh, four different cases uh, this this uh, in the last lecture. Now, in this capacitive vernier control mode the net impedance of TCSC that 
that is ZTCSC is capacitive. That means, here ZTCSC is positive okay, and here ZTCSC is negative. This is already I explained okay, and these two are two modes of operation of TCSC during healthy operating conditions. With these two other two modes are the two modes of operation which are only exercised during abnormal uh, operating conditions or before you go for this vernier control mode. Okay. So, these are the modes of operation of TCSC. Okay. Now, next I will uh, start explaining this basic mathematical modeling of TCSC. Mathematical model modeling of TCSC. Okay. So, this is one of the important aspect of understanding uh, the basic concept of uh, the compensator or uh, TCSC. Right. So, as uh, this mathematical modeling of different types of static power compensators which I discussed before. Okay. Now, before we do this mathematical modeling, so let us again draw this, this equivalent circuit diagram for TCSC. Here we have this fixed capacitor, here we have variable reactor. This reactance of the variable reactor would be varied through the firing angle control of the uh, thyristors and that is what yeah, I hope you understood. Okay. So, this is our fixed capacitor, here we have fixed inductor and this is basically connected to the transmission line. So, these are transmission line. Okay. Now, suppose the current flowing through the transmission line is represented with I of t. So, looking at this representation, you can understand this I of t is equal to this I m, let us say cos omega t, which represent instantaneous line current of the transmission line. Okay. Now, uh, suppose the current flowing through this capacitor is represented by I of C t. So, I of C t is instantaneous current flowing through the capacitor. Okay. And suppose current flowing through this reactor having this uh, inductance L is represented by I L T okay? or we, we will uh, let us represent it I T C R T. Okay? So, where this I T C R T represents instantaneous current flowing through the T C R. Now, what is T C R? T C R is thyristor control reactor, this is the T C R this is uh, representing a TCR. Okay. So, only difference of uh, the usual TCR uh, that you know is that this TCR uh, is coming in parallel to the capacitor. So, this TCR does not need to have the system voltage level rather it would be its voltage level would be much lower than the voltage level uh, of the uh, overall this transmission line 
and it this uh, voltage level of this TCR will be similar to the voltage across the capacitor. Right? Now, with this let us apply this uh, our basic electrical engineering laws that we know. Uh, now, what are the laws we know? One is Kirchhoff's current law, another is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, suppose this voltage across this capacitor at any instant of time is representing VCT or I should draw it here. So, uh, voltage across the capacitor let us consider represented by VCT. So, VCT represents instantaneous voltage voltage across the capacitor. Okay. All right. Now, if we apply Kirchhoff's current law here, so applying KCL. KCL at the node indicated, what we get? We will get if we apply KCL at this point. So, you know that uh, incoming current should be summation of the outgoing current. So, we can write I of t is equal to I C of t plus I T C R of t. Okay. So, this is the by applying this KCL. Okay. Now, if we apply KVL across this capacitor, okay. so what would be the KVL equation? Applying KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law at cross the capacitor. what we get? We get this I C T is equal to C D V C D T. Okay. Where V C is also instantaneous voltage. Okay. So, this we get uh, by applying uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law across this capacitor. Similarly, this applying K V L across this inductor applying KVL across the this TCR, what we get? Because uh, as if you can understand that this is uh, why uh, we are considering is TCR, because we are considering that this is equivalent to we have a fixed capacitor and a TCR. Okay. Now, what is the TCR? This TCR is basically the, there is a bidirectional switch here of thyristor and the inductor or reactor in series. Okay. So, uh, when we have a bidirectional thyristor in series with a reactor, this forms a TCR. Okay. So, this is what we know. Now, if we apply KVL across the TCR, what we will get? We will get the voltage across this inductor is equal to the voltage across the capacitor. So, which is equal to V C T V C of T is equal to L. We know that this voltage across this inductor is represented by L D I D T. So, this is equal to L D I T C R T of T. Okay. However, as you know this this current flowing through this reactor is basically controlled by this uh, TCR uh, switching. So, there is to be one variable that should be uh, multiplied with this VCT, where u is equal to 1 when TCR is on. Okay. Otherwise, u would be equal to 0, 0 otherwise. Okay. So, that is something we should understand. Okay. Now, we need to aggregate all these equations, one is KCL equation, another is 2 KVL equation. 
okay now if i put this equation i c t is equal to this in this equation and we know i of t is equal to i m cos omega t so what we can write i m cos omega t that is left hand side which is the basically the instantaneous line current this this current flowing through this transmission line uh, now here we do not assume that uh, this tcr is located or uh, this tcsc is located at the midpoint it can be located at any point of the transmission line it can be at the sending end or it at the receiving end or at the any point of the transmission line so uh, we assume that current flowing through this transmission line is im cos omega t wherever it is placed then this will be equal to we know i c t is equal to this so let us put it there i c t is equal to c d v c t d t plus this i t c r of t okay all right now what we can uh, also write okay so this is one equation we get okay now from this equation again we can write one thing that this d if we just differentiate this vct again with respect to t both sides then it will be d v c of t d t will be equal to l d 2 i t c r t d t ok. Of course, when u is equal to 1. Now, if we put this over here then this equation will be i m cos omega t is equal to if you put this equation here that d v c uh, d t i am just simply replacing this d v c d t with this with this then what i will get is uh, this will be equal to l c d 2 i t c r of t d t 2 plus i t c r t so this is what the equations final equations we are trying to arrive with ok now look at this equation what sort of equation it is it is a second order equation right so this is having a equation with second order differential form or it is a second order differential equation right now we need to solve that in classroom i asked my student to solve it Okay. So, here I can show you the direct solution all of you all of uh, these learners can solve it personally. So, if you solve it then we will get the solution of this equation you will get i t c r t is equal to some factor lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 i m cos omega t plus some arbitrary constant a cos omega r t cos omega r t is another frequency component plus b sin omega r t again this b is arbitrary constant. So, this is what the solution of this uh, differential equation higher this lambda is the ratio of omega r to omega and omega r is the frequency other than the power frequency which is the frequency of resonance as, as we know and a and b are two arbitrary constant ok. So, when we have two arbitrary constants like this we need to find out the expressions of this a and b which will be uh, determining 
by applying the boundary conditions ok. Similar to this uh, what we did uh, before also ok. So, let me draw the waveform. Suppose, this is the profile of I of t, although it is cos omega t, but do not assume that this corresponds to omega 2 is equal to 0. So, then uh, this omega t is equal to 0 would be somewhere else, okay. but uh, this will be like a sinusoid. Okay. So, this is the line current. Okay. So, this is the line current I of t. Okay. Now, if this line current is this, then this could be our axis corresponds to omega t is equal to 0. This could be our axis corresponds to omega t is equal to 0. Okay. I will come to that. Now, uh, if it is the profile of I of t, then how this V c t will be? So, uh, if it is so, then uh, uh, this our V c t profile would be like this. So, V c uh, t profile will be like this. this is the VCT profile, but actual VCT will be something else which I am coming to that later on, but this VCT profile would be something like that. Okay. For uh, certain conditions this will get changed which I will discuss later on. Okay. So, this is the profile of VC of T. Okay. Then where would be the waveforms of this the current flowing through the TCR? Okay, or current flowing through this reactor. Okay, so that is ITC here. That is this current. So this current profile would be somewhere like this. And this current, you know, it can be distorted current because it can be fully sinusoid or it can be distorted because uh, because this TCR, depending upon the mode of operation of these switches, can provide you a sinusoidal uh, or can uh, 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 this draw a sinusoidal current or a distorted current. Okay. So, this I already discussed. So, this is a harmonical current as you can understand and you know that here uh, there are four different instants. One is let us say this instant, this is omega t 1 let us say, this is another instance, let us say this is omega t 2. Okay and this instance is let us say omega t 3 and this instance is let us say is represented by omega t 4. What are those things? I will come to that. Okay. Now, this is representing I of T C R T instantaneous current flowing through the T C R. This is I T C R T. Okay. And this angle for which this will conduct is the conduction angle that is sigma. So, this is sigma, this is sigma. So, as you know sigma is the conduction angle. Okay. And this V c t profile as I said this V c t profile is basically the voltage across the capacitor when it will be operated as a fixed uh, this capacitor mode. So, this V c t profile is rather this uh, in this particular condition this voltage across the capacitor when it is operated uh, like a fixed capacitor in block thyristor mode of operation. Okay. But when it is operated in vernier control mode this V c t would be different. I am coming to that. I will uh, slowly try to develop this waveform for this V c uh, t that is uh, voltage across the capacitor 
when the TCSC would be operating in either of this vernier control mode. It can be operated in inductive vernier control or capacitive vernier control. Okay. Now, what is this omega t, omega t 2? There is another terminology which would be uh, exclusive for this TCSC that is this angle, the ang this angle, this angle is called angle beta. So, if this is beta, so this will be also beta. Okay. So, the here this beta is called angle of advance. angle of advance. Why it is called angle of advance? Because you see this corresponds to this, this, this curve, this line, this vertical line corresponds to the instance let us say omega t is equal to 0. So, if it is so, then uh, this conduction starts beta angle before and that is why it is called angle of advance. Now, we have uh, as I said this omega t 1 which is is equal to minus beta. Okay. Now, what is then uh, omega t 2? So, omega t 2 will be equal to omega t 1 plus sigma. Right. Then, what is omega t 3? This omega t 3 will be again. So, as you know from here to here, uh, it will be pi angle. So, this is pi minus beta. And this omega t 4 is equal to omega t 3 plus sigma. So, these are the 4 instants. Okay. So, this is the instance where conduction start, this is the instance where conduction the TCR current starts, TCR current starts and this is also the instant when TCR current starts. Okay. Now, you know that depending upon this value of this conduction angle, this conduction angle can be uh, uh, this pi or it can be 0. So, the limit of this conduction angle is pi to 0. So, when this conduction angle uh, this sigma is equal to pi, that means this uh, starting from here to here, then it means uh, this thyristors are fully turned on. Thyristors are fully turned on. Okay. When the this is 0, that means thyristors are fully turned off. Okay. So, when uh, sigma is in between these values, that means thyristors are partially this conducting. So, any value of the sigma in between pi to 0 implies to that thyristors are partially uh, conducting, right? Or they are partially turned on. So, when the thyristor is partially turned on, there would be harmonics. Again, so, so that means uh, this vernier control mode of operation, vernier control mode of operation operation that is partial conduction of thyristors will create harmonics. So, that is something uh, you should understand. So, here also there is a problem of harmonic when they are operating in uh, this vernier control mode, but the, the, this vernier control mode is the actual mode of operations of TCSC. So, obviously, that uh, means that uh, similar to TCR or similar to any kind of static bar compensator, uh, in TCSC also there would be some harmonical current. Now, you may ask one thing that uh, this is ITCR and this is what the line current. 
So, therefore, if this line current let us assume perfectly sinusoid uh, because of the non sinusoidal uh, or uh, distorted sinusoidal of this TCR current, uh, this current flowing through the capacitor that is I C T would be also distorted. Okay. So, therefore, the voltage across the capacitor will also be distorted. So, this voltage V C T uh, wave from whatever I have uh, shown you, this is the voltage across this capacitor profile considering that this T C S C operation operation in fixed capacitor mode. So, other than that this V C T actual the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor would be also distorted would be also harmonics. So, what how the, this would be uh, I will draw it later on, but this is what the uh, this this situation is. But one thing I will also discuss that uh, we will work on this particular solution in very detail we will uh, derive the expressions for this A and B in subsequent lecture. Uh, through this boundary conditions by using this boundary conditions. Now, what should be this boundary conditions that we can develop right now okay, from this particular waveform. Now, what would be this boundary conditions for this I T C R T? Now, one thing that you can see this uh, I T C R T, I T C R this when it is equal to this T 1 that is minus beta by omega. So, as you can see omega T 1 is equal to beta. So, T 1 is equal to minus beta by omega. So, this is equal to uh, this I T C R this uh, T 2 which is equal to uh, minus beta or it can be written as plus beta by omega. So, this is can be also written as uh, this can be also written as this omega t can be also written as since this is angle of advance. So, this will be equal to plus beta. So, this is plus beta omega is equal to 0. So, this could be one boundary conditions. Okay. So, this could be one boundary conditions. Another is you can see if you look at V c t. So, at this value uh, at omega t 1. So, that means V c t when uh, this is equal to t is equal to minus beta by omega. So, this will be equal to uh, this uh, V c that is this beta by this beta divided by omega. So, the voltage at this point and voltage at this point would be equal but opposite its sign. So, these are the two boundary conditions. From this boundary conditions, we will proceed further and develop this expressions for these two arbitrary constants one is A, another is B in the next lecture. Okay. But we have this boundary conditions. Now, one thing that I also discuss over here is how to this consider this firing angle control in TCSC. In TCSC firing angle control, usually uh, this zero crossing of this line current is considered. So, either this or this. So, this is considered the firing angle alpha, this is also considered the firing angle alpha. So, here alpha is the firing angle which is measured from measured from 0 crossing line currents. Okay. So, this alpha is the firing angle. What is firing angle? Firing angle is uh, this the angle which is required to set to, to bring the thyristors in conduction. And this is done by considering this zero crossing, it is measured from this zero crossing line current. So, one is this, another is this. Okay. So, this is how it works. Okay. 
brief this uh, mathematical modeling of TCSC, we will continue this mathematical modeling in the subsequent lecture, we will derive the expressions of this arbitrary constants A and B and we also derive the actual expression of this VCT, uh, that is this VCT. As I said, this VCT profile is not the actual this voltage profile across the capacitor because the voltage across the capacitor will depend on upon the current flowing through the capacitor that is ICT and this ICT will is basically as you see from this KCL equation is the difference of the line current, this line current and this TCR current. Now, when you have this uh, TCR current distorted, uh, it is non sinusoid or it is of harmonic, uh, then uh, in even if you this line current is perfectly sinusoidal, then ICT will be also non sinusoid, which makes this voltage across the capacitor which already depends upon this voltage. So, voltage also subsequently depends upon the current. So, this voltage across the capacitor will be also distorted, it will be non sinusoidal or it would be harmonic. Now, uh, what would be the actual expression of this instantaneous voltage across the capacitor that I will uh, derive uh, from this mathematical equations and then we will try to plot it. Okay. So, this we will do and another thing we will do also that we will try to develop the expressions for actual impedance uh, uh, which is uh, ZTCSC of this overall system uh, in a function of this uh, angle of advance that is beta which is very important. So, here as I said angle of advance or beta is having a importance, important parameters. So, depending upon this value by changing this value we can control this ITCR current and subsequently we can control the capacitor voltage as well. Okay. So, therefore, we can this this angle of beta is an important parameter and we will also try to develop the expression for the impedance of overall uh, circuit as a function of this angle of uh, advance. Okay. So, this we will develop in the subsequent lecture. So, up to this today. Uh, so, let me thank you for your attention in this particular lecture. So, thank you very much for attending this lecture, uh, I am looking forward for the next lecture, thank you very much.